Moin Moin, my name is Matthias Buman and I welcome you to the Safe Summit Community Voice 2020. Let's talk about the word prioritizing with greatest, shortest job first. First of all, we do the check-in. So I will explain you the roadmap which we will go through in the next 20, 25 minutes. Um, I will explain you the learning outcomes, but I hope that you will get with you. And last but not least, I will tell you a little bit about me, myself, and I. So first of all, the roadmap. So we start now with the check-in, then we will restate the problem. Then I will explain you a little bit in a way to show this job first in a nutshell. I have two cases with me. I will explain the way to show this job first. And finally, I give you a practical example how to apply. Then I will follow you um, a cockbook and I will tell you which audience you should have in this way the shortest job first meetings, which rules you should apply, which meeting recurrence I recommend. And finally, I give you tips and tricks from my experience. Finally, after 20, 25 minutes, we have our checkout. So I give you three takeaways. I will let you know which resources you can uh, used to go deeper and gain your knowledge and I will explain you a little bit about our capability uh, which I work for. So first of all, second point, learning outcomes. So what I want to show you is a method to focus on the most important things which bring the most values in the shortest sustainable lead time. And I would like to give you a cookbook how to get quick started and apply it to your needs. These are both the both things which I plan um, to show you today. I'm glad that you're here and that you spend the next 20, 25 minutes with me together. Uh, my name is Matthias Christian Bullmann. I'm from Düsseldorf in Germany and I would, don't would like to say what I am, but when you call people like me, you have a large scale agile project or program and you like to be transformed. So in general, um, I bring a lot of safe knowledge with me and a, um, a really deep knowledge in SAP. So my specializing is large scale agile projects where you have SAP with them. So how you can see, I was starting as a IT system merchant by Dativ um, in the year of 1997. And in the long last 23 years, I had a lot of touch points. I was an IT lead for two offices. Um, I was studying in the greatest town uh, after Düsseldorf in Germany, Wilhelmshaven. And um, after that, I was doing a job as a SAP freelance recruiter and C-level headhunter. And then I was doing um, adult certification and start my SAP career um, for a small company, um, consulting company in uh, South Germany. And then I was switching um, to Accenture. And um, in the past I was um, doing logistic and finance jobs. And since four years almost, I'm a lean and agile coach. So, and finally, <laughs> a small funny fact, because as a lean and agile coach, sometimes you need to entertain the people. Yes, I was an ex-chief entertainer and chief show guide. So um, I was doing it uh, in my free time in general, but um, in 2004, I was for one and a half year, a full-time chief entertainer at um, the Canary Islands and also on the Greek island. So that's about me, your host today. Let's start with restate the problem. So when we go into the companies and they said, hey, Mr. Agile Coach, we need to be more agile. What can we do? Make us agile. And we present then when we have large scale environments, the safe framework, because we think, I think it's a, it's a good framework for the start with out of the box trainings, a lot of people who use it, uh, a great large companies in the world uh, use it and we have a good uh, a lot of proposals um, which we can show how um, they succeed with this framework so but really really quickly they come back and said okay sorry we would like to do agile uh, but not this much deepen framework 
things. So it is too expensive. We need so much time to enable uh, and so much training, which comes up to the first point, too expensive. And yeah, maybe our people has not the right mindset and pool to change it. It needs ah, years of years and we need to be agile tomorrow. You know, Mr. Agile Coach. So the last point is every time we need it faster, what can we do? And um, I have a practical example on one, um, and, and one of my clients, um, a friend of me, thought about it and said, okay, we really believe that the people who are doing the work day by day, they deliver great things and they're working really good together. Huh? Maybe not in an agile way, but they work since a couple of months and years together and they do good things and they work really hard. So we believe in people. But what we see in most of the companies, in this company as well, is that they lose time because they are working on things which they recognized as waste. So we think about, or we thought about, so what, how can we help them to work on the value things? but on the waste, waste things. And SAFE has a really good solution for this, the waitest, shortest job first. So <clears throat> I have two cases with me to think about. You are now a product manager and you need to decide on which job you will work first. So for the first job, you have only financial reward of a small amount of money. The second job, you have the double amount. And the third job, you get the true amount of, um, of money. So which job do you want to choose? Yes, the third one, because money, money, money. I see money. Yeah? I get a lot of money, so I will work on the third job. It's really simple to decide this. Now we come to the second case. Now it's about complexity of the job. So when you do the first job and you release the value to the customer, you have a small complexity and you get around 1,000 euro. For the second job, you have a little bit more complexity. It's a double amount of complexity instead of the first job. So, but you will get 10,000 euro when you release the value to the customer. Now we have the third job and we have a lot of complexity. We need a lot of people who, who uh, put their knowledge in and do analysis and so on and so forth. But we will get 1 million euros and we release this value to the customer. So you as a product owner, product manager, let me know which job do you want to choose? It's really, really difficult. So how to decide? It's not an easy decision. It is every time the same thing. Because maybe we choose a third job because it's a job which belongs to the, uh, to the target of a C-level. But when we maybe go for job two, we can release much more quicker our value to the customer, get feedback, and maybe we gain then more money along the time frame instead of job three. We don't know it now. So, but safe has a, as I said already, has a really good um, formula for this. This is the way the shortest job first. <clears throat> first of all, I would like to um, remember um, on a uh, quote from Don Reinertsen, and he said, if you only quantify one thing, quantify the cost of delay. And you remember my first semester at my uh, university, the Jade Hochschule in Wilhelmshaven, and uh, Professor Illiquid uh, told us, lay gentlemen, do you know what is opportunity cost? This is the cost of delay. And we said no, and he said, these are the costs which you have when you don't do something. This was one of the first thing, things which I learned in economics. And I was really happy as I saw and read this quote. So which safe principles you see on the left side are affected with uh, when you apply this way to short job first formula? So first of all, is it, uh, you take an economic view because you quantify the cost of delay and not what someone wants to have because of which reasons ever. The second one is apply system thinking because 
you see the overall thing and decide for the because the vision and mission and the targets are the North Star which you estimate your jobs against. I will show you later what it means. You decentralize the decision making because not the people on the top of the company will do the decision. They will give the vision and mission and targets and the people who do the, who are really deep in the knowledge of the jobs, the epics or the features, huh? they will do the decision because they have the knowledge. And the last one, number 10, organize around value because really important what I said in slide uh, in, the, in the first slide, it's about delivering the, the things with the most value in the shortest sustainable lead time. We look only on the value. So <clears throat> our formula is really, really simple. The prioritization and decision model is uh, the cost of delay and we divide it through the job duration, job size. So the cost of delay has three uh, points. The one is business value. So business value ma means how important, how critical is this item for your business? Yeah, and normally um, you have your vision, mission, roadmap, and your targets from the from the, uh, the top level, and then you ask yourself, okay, how much value um, I have uh, when I release it to the customer? The time criticality is uh, the question, okay, how urgent do you need this item for your users? Um, an example is GDPR in Europe. So GDPR, um, as the first idea came from the politicians, was not really time critical for the companies. But <clears throat> as you uh, maybe read in the newspaper, so two, three, four months before uh, the go life of GDPR, uh, a lot of companies didn't implement it. So the time criticality raised up really, really quickly and really high. And the last one is risk deduction and opportunity enablement. So um, this is not directly about business value, but um, first of all, I ask, okay, do I have a risk when I doesn't deliver this? Yeah, for example, it's GDPR together with time criticality, three, four months before go live, and you didn't implement it before. Yeah, it's really, really high risk when you doesn't um, when you doesn't uh, release and work on this this feature. So, uh, opportunity enablement, good example from the IT area, and I'm from the IT area, therefore I give you a lot of IT examples, is um, a new database, yeah? or an update for the database. So maybe it doesn't have directly a business value, but when you have this uh, updated database, so maybe you have new functions where you then create features for it and can do some uh, great new things. So this three numbers together is the cost of delay, the sum of the three. Yeah, and then you ask uh, um, about the job duration or job smart, job size. Yeah, so the smallest job, so the people who are in this committee in this meeting who decide this, ask, okay, which is the smallest job which can we do really quickly? Yeah, not about one or two days. Which is the smallest one? And then you give them the one. Yeah. And <clears throat> when you finish this, you pick the jobs as the most value in the shortest sustainable lead time. Yeah, relative to the others first. Really cool thing, and it works. How does it work? So you will see in the next slide. So this is a practical example from the reality. Um, we have here our epics, yeah? it's about customer marketing, and we have our features. So we have number one, it's personal personalization of email stage one. Number two is migration of hybrid emails into SFMC. And number three is the segment and uh, SFMC integration. Um, really important is a scale for each parameter. You see it on the um, bottom of the slide is one, three, five, eight, 13, and 20. This is a modified Fibonacci row. Yeah, And what you then do is, Normally you have no numbers in it. So you have only um, the features and the corresponded epic. Yeah, you have owner in it, you have a description in it. And then you go in the first column, user business value. And you ask the group and yourself, which 
has the smallest user business value when we release it to the customer. Yeah, and you need to have a look on your vision, mission, roadmap, or the target which comes from the top level or department leads or whoever. Yeah, and then they decided, as you can see, that um, the feature number three has the smallest business value. What you do then is you get, go on uh, on the on the first line uh, on top of the of the um, Excel sheet, and then you ask the feature number one. How much business value has this when we estimate it relative against number three? And they decided it's a five times more business value and give it a five. Then they go to the next line, number two, and they decide it's the value is 10. Yeah, it's really important to know that you don't go back. So you go from top to bottom until every uh, column is then uh, fulfilled. Then you go to the next one, time criticality, and you do the same. You decide which is the one, and then you go from top to the bottom and um, estimate every feature against this smallest feature. Yeah? Uh, but it's allowed that you have more uh, more um, features as only one with a uh, a run rating, right? This is, but you need to have a start point. Then you go to the risk reduction and, uh, and or opportunity able, enablement, you do the same. Then you have the cost of delay and you see number one has a 14, number two has a 21, and number three has a nine. So what I learned in economics from Professor Litwick is that normally I should take care of feature number two because uh, it has a highest cost of delay. But then it doesn't take care of the shortest sustainable lead time because it's about quick wins and fast uh, delivery. Then we decide how big is the job size. Yeah, We do the same as in the other columns. And then we have a rating. So as you can see, feature one has a 2.8. Feature two has a 2.1 and feature three, which has the smallest cost of delay, but has the smallest job size, has the highest weight as job first uh, result in number nine. That means I start with number three, then I go to number one, and then I go to number two. This makes sure that I deliver really quickly value to the customer, and then I can get feedback and so on. So, now we come, we are finally uh, finished. And uh, this is a cookbook. Um, how did we start at the client? So we didn't have a safe environment over there. So the practical was we first had a leadership meeting. Yeah, the outcome needs to be the uh, the way the shortest job third or first or my American colleagues said which if is approved and will be communicated. So the stakeholders there are the C level, error manager, etc. We had the first uh, talk with the C level, and he said this is a really great idea because I don't think that we can um, that we can talk about the how we work currently in the company, but to talk about the what we should work on is a really good idea, and this is what we can implement really quickly. So then we have had a, a initial way to short job first meeting, yeah, and all attendees, we had um, their department leads, some uh, business analysts, some experts, yeah, all the people who can do decisions. Yeah, and the leadership was there uh, um, as well, and they opened this, uh, he opened the session and uh, tell him uh, tell tell the group what uh, uh, he expect from them. And the outcome was that we had uh, <coughs> that we had regular meetings set up, clear rules we we find together, um, and really important they are agreed from all. Why I will come back later to it. So then we had our first uh, wish to start meeting. Yeah. <clears throat> so we create is then a Kanban with rules and make it explicit. Yeah. Really important is that only artifacts which met the full criteria and status where wish to is mandatory to apply are discussed in this round. Yeah, so two days before we start with this meeting, we had a deadline that every feature owner was supposed to send us the 
uh, full declared features that we can have a look over it and come back to them with feedback and tag it into this meeting. Yeah, and uh, the third point is all persons need to attend, which was in the circle of this WISCHIF meeting. Yeah? So if not, they can send a deputy, but all decisions which may, will be made in this meeting are fixed and valid for the next period. This was a period of three months, and that's it. So as you can see, uh, on top is the enable and then start phase. Yeah. Then we had um, a continuous cycle because we, we start with this wish to start meeting. Um, and every three months, we have this meeting. And we have follow-up meetings one time a month where we discuss the current features, uh, how is the progress, and we discuss the upcoming maybe features or features which we doesn't take into this period um, and we do uh, refinements and uh, apply the mischief formula. So in an in an, a safe environment, um, ethics, um, we have three status where a mischief is applied, so reviewing, analyzing and portfolio backlog. So who should attend? So the stakeholders, <clears throat> are the epic owners, the enterprise architect, and facilitate with this by the lean portfolio management engineer. Features, we have two um, status in Kanban where we, um, where which of this applies, so it's analyzing and uh, backlog. So in the stakeholders for the features in a large solution, Environment is a solution architect engineer, solution management, and facilitate with this by the solution train engineer. In an essential configuration, um, the stakeholders are the system architect and engineer, the product management, and facilitate with it by the release train engineer. Yeah, this is what you uh, need to know for the uh, safe environment. I hope that helps a little bit, practical example and example for the safe world. Tips and tricks. So <clears throat> we made mistakes as well uh, and can tell you the one or other <laughs> fuck up story, but um, to prevent you. So four points was or are really important from my side. So first of all, leadership. Bottom up is a really good idea, but in this case, leadership needs to be there and needs to approve it, needs to stand behind it. Because we had a lot of situations where the people said, I'm not interested in the things, I will go my own way. And, uh, and the CEO stand behind us and said, I expect this, I approve this, and this is an experiment. I know it's hard for you, ladies and gentlemen, but for the next half year, we do this. And the result, yeah, you maybe know it already, is we do it since two and a half years. Really successful. And now we talk also at the client about the, how they work, how they uh, will, uh, um, uh, will change the teams, et cetera, et cetera. Huh? So second of, uh, of all is time. And I made this mistake in my first uh, portfolio coach role. And we had an initial meeting with the Epic owners was around, I think, 14, 15 people. We met us at around 5 p.m. And uh, we planned for two hours initial mischief meeting um, with, I think, 13 or 14 Epics. So I thought, yeah, two, two and a half hours, we will make it. After six and a half hours, we was finished. So for the first meetings, please save enough time for this. It can be really fast, but it doesn't last. And maybe you have, uh, before you have uh, this, um, uh, this first uh, mischief meeting, yeah, maybe you do a pre-session to explain the uh, or pre-training, a small training session where you explain a little bit about um, the Vistia formula and yeah, build up a small training yeah, where they learn how to um, how to do this and how to apply. Okay, maybe that's a quick idea. That's a, what I thought. The next time I will do it. Rules really important. The rules 
you can give a little bit input in what you think it's good, but let the participants please set their own rules. And everyone needs to agree. Yeah, it's really important. When you do the second meeting, where you find the rules. Everyone needs to approve these rules at the end of the day. And maybe you make it visual, visual as well and hang it then in the, in the room where you have this uh, mischief meetings. Yeah? And make it explicit as well in the intranet, Confluence, Shira, wherever. Huh? And audience, this, uh, this meetings, um, a lot of people are interested in these meetings because they are really powerful meetings. So keep the amount of people as small as possible. Otherwise, you have a lot of discussions and people from outside ask questions um, and hijack the meetings. It's just not really good. It's not really valuable. So take care of the audience, really. We are finally almost finished. Now we do the checkout, key takeaways. Number one, I hope you understand why it can make sense to focus on the on what jobs we should work instead of the how we work on jobs. Number two, you understand what is mischief and how you apply it. And number three, the mischief quick start cookbook uh, you take with you and you know how to start implementing mischief on different levels and had a practical insight. This is resources and really important, resources, are not humans. So please click on the links and um, have a deeper insight of uh, several things. I'd like to tell you quickly a little bit about our capabilities of delivery agility with an Accenture. We are a special uh, department uh, which focuses on large scale agile SAP programs and how you can see there. I don't want to mention everything. We did a lot of things in, in the past. Um, and what we are really proud of is, if you look really on the right side, the International Consortium of Agile, they certified our ZAP Delivery the Agility Fundamentals training, three days where we work with you to gather knowledge for you. Um, and um, uh, it's about agility and how to apply agility in SAP. So, and if you look on the top uh, on the bottom we have the global leading sap agile academy because what we found out is that uh, we need to make sure that uh, that executives managers senior managers needs to be prepared for the new time for the new agile environment so we have a we have a one year program which is uh, running since 2017 uh, with four boot camps and Bootcamp one, we have fundamental agile trainings and workshops, and we have a practice period. Yeah, and um, it's really important that the results or what you learned in the bootcamp one, which you then will uh, apply in the projects and work out several business cases, which you present then in bootcamp two. There we have the advanced agile trainings and boot camps like the SAP program consultant, Kanban management professional one, etc. Then we have again a practice period. Then we have the boot camp three where we do um, agile delivery excellence trainings like the self release uh, train engineer. Then we have a practice period as well. And then we have a final enterprise agile. Um, workshops and trainings like the enterprise agile coach and the safe, safe lean portfolio management yeah and after the year the people are uh, which which attend um, are ready for large scale agile environments in the sap area and I would like to mention our sub business agility white paper with its 10, 10 critical success factors the link you will have in the uh, resources uh, section sets a little bit about me if you are interested uh, to follow me on LinkedIn sing, or Instagram. And finally, thank you very much that you stayed the last uh, 30 minutes with me. I hope you gain a little bit more knowledge about uh, Wischief. And uh, yeah, please write me an email or give me a call. Um, uh, when you have uh, questions regarding this and when you have success stories. Thank you very much. Stay safe and have a great time. Goodbye. 